Hello and welcome. So before I start the video, a few announcements. Uh, first things first, quick reminders, I'm going to do two to three grades a week. One is going to be a module grade. The module for this week is module one, Banking Basics, so do complete that. Then there's going to be a Google quiz grade, which is going to be content based. So that way I know you retain the information I taught you this week. And third is going to be a writing grade to make sure you can write properly. That's 12.1a in your standard. So there's going to be at least one video a week. Uh, notice that we're on video two already. This is so that way you don't watch a 50 minute video and have your brain fried. I break it up a little bit. Uh, and then I might make clarification videos here or there if I get a common question on Google Meets a lot. Uh, also keep in mind we are taking attendance. Uh, you can get your attendance taken via contacting the teacher, whether it's a message to me, a comment on a YouTube video, or a comment on Google Classroom or stop it by office hours. Uh, get your friends to sign up for consumer education. It's a graduation requirement that has not been waived. So please do so. Uh, it's also good because uh, you're not playing with your money. You become financially savvy. And with that being said, let's begin the video. Uh, in the last video, we covered four types of accounts. A certificate of deposit, money market accounts, saving accounts, and checking accounts. And this here is ordered from highest amount of interest you gain on them to lowest amount of interest. Now keep in mind this is generally, generally the highest amount of interest to the lowest amount of interest. Depending on the institution or different bank, you might have a money market account that's higher than a savings account. You might have certain savings accounts that are higher than certain certificate of deposits. So do keep in mind it, it might differentiate here or there. This is a general list. Now these numbers here, these are the amount of times you can withdraw from the account. A certificate of deposit, it has the highest amount of interest, but in return, you cannot withdraw from it for a certain period of time. So let's say you get 2% interest on your CD is for one year. What that means is that you'll get that 2% interest, but you cannot touch the money. If you do, you will incur a penalty. So let's say you will take it out at month nine. You might get a penalty where you lose three months worth of interest or six months of interest depending on your institution. So do keep that in mind. Uh, money market accounts. These typically get higher interest than savings accounts because you have to deposit an amount of money. You need to maintain a certain amount, whether it's a thousand dollars, a ten thousand dollars. You do need to keep a certain earned amount, or you get a penalty. Six times a month, you can withdraw from it. A savings account, usually no minimum. You can withdraw from it six times a month. And checking account, you can take out as many times as you need to. This is used for your general day-to-day -day purchases. Uh, you can use it as many times as you have funds. If you obviously use money you do not have, you get an overdraft fee and you go into debt, so keep that in mind. Uh, now using an ATM, depending on their network, they may charge a fee. Uh, banks make deals with ATMs, or ATM companies rather, so that way you can use their ATM without incurring a fee. Now if you use an ATM that is out of network, then they may charge you an extra 250 225 whatever it may be. Uh, in addition, check to see if your card has a limit. I myself was on a youth account for a very long time. Uh, and so they had a $300 limit, which is a lot of money. But when I needed to make a big purchase here or there, I couldn't do it in one go. I had to call my bank and get them to raise the limit for that one purchase. Uh, and that's just a pain to go through. So make sure to see if your card has a limit. Now the limit can be based on the total you could spend per day or it could be based on how much cash you could withdraw per day. So you might have a $300 spending limit but you could only withdraw up to $100 per day from an ATM. And check your balance too. Just do it because <laughs> you don't want to pay an overdraft fee. You just don't. You want to manage your money well. Now safe ATM use. Make sure it's in a public place so that way there's less of a chance of there being a crime. Nobody will rob you or there'll be less of a chance you'll be robbed. Uh, be conscious of your surrounding. Make sure there are no suspicious people. Make sure there are no like hidden cameras. Make sure nobody's over your shoulder peeking at your uh, ATM card. Uh, use one in a bank if you can. That's a very protected institution. There's security guards. And generally speaking, the machines are not tampered with. 
Now you might go, what? The machine's going to be tampered with? Yes, they are. Uh, so check the card reader, which is this here, to make sure that it's not been tampered with. As you can see here, uh, somebody put a device there to go and steal your information. So that way when you put your card in there, they have all your information because they want to scam you out of your money. So do check this, okay? Uh, and you could usually check this by grabbing it, by jiggling it, by inspecting it, see if there's any irregularities. In extreme cases, it ends up like this. So see, boom, right there. They want to scam you out of your money so badly, they created that entire device to take money away from you. So it is always in your best interest to tech the ATM. Uh, now, ATM, or rather your cards, tend to come with a PIN number. Uh, you make a purchase and they say, insert PIN number, so that way we can approve it. Now, PIN number is a unique identifier code. If you don't put it in proper, then you cannot withdraw the money. Uh, some advice for picking your PIN number, don't pick easy numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, or birthdays that are easy to guess. Because uh, maybe somebody close to you will steal your card and then guess it's your birthday and then steal money from you. Hopefully not, but that may happen. So to keep it safe, make sure you use a number that they can't easily guess. Or you can also use words to remember. So notice here that every number has letters attached to it. So let's say you don't want to remember numbers, so you want to use a word. You can say dog. So D O G S or in this case three six four seven uh, and also with words I recommend not using very common words like dogs cats so that is another tip for you now let's move on to checks and numbers on your accounts what they mean so typically speaking a check has a routing number and an account number a routing number is the number that identifies which bank your money is stored in, which unique institution it is stored in. Your account number is the number of your accounts at that institution, and different accounts have different account numbers. Your checking account will have a different number than your bank, than your uh, savings account or your money market account. So do keep that in mind. And this check number, as it says here, is just the number of your check. And uh, the routing number and the account number is what is needed for institutions to take money from your account or to deposit. So if you want to set up for direct deposit from your job, you're going to need your routing and your account number. If you want to sign up for paying your bills and you want them to take it directly from your account, then you need the routing and the account number. Uh, now, writing checks. So here are some things you're going to need to do. All checks have a date, pay to the order, a dollars line, a box here, a memo, and this here. First things first, you need to put the date. Put the date you wrote the check, not the day you think you'll cash it. This is just a safety precaution. Two, pay to the order of. Who are you paying it to? Are you paying it to a company or are you paying it to a certain individual person? Uh, three, this box here is so that way you can put the... Uh, amount and numbers that you're going to withdraw from your account or pay to the person. In this case, $8.15. And four, you put it in words. So that way there's verification that you meant this number. Or if they can't read this, they have it right here. Uh, this is also a convention they do, is that they write the amount of cents in fractions, 8 and 15 out of 100. And notice here, too, that if you choose to do it flat, like $200, you put zero out of 100 as well. So that's just a unique convention of checks. Some people choose not to do it, but it is a commonplace thing to do. Uh, the memo. This here is just a reminder for what you spent it on. So when you get your bank statement, you're going to put, oh, lunch with friends. That's why I spent $8.15. And this here to the right is your signature. To verify that you did it. Now you may notice here that uh, there's a line here. The purpose of this line is so that way people cannot add on to the end of this. So that way they're like, oh, it's just 8 and 15 over 100. There's nothing additional to this here. 
So do keep it in mind that's the purpose of this little squiggly line. Though it's not always necessary and sometimes people don't do it, but again it's a safety precaution. So now let's talk about opening an account. You're gonna need a value, a valid Garmin issued photo ID. This can be a driver's license, a state ID, a passport, etc. etc. You're also gonna need to provide information such as your birth date, social security, or phone number. Uh, if you're not 18, and many of you are probably not, you'll likely need a co-owner on the account because some of you probably already do have your accounts, but that was opened by your parents and they're a co-owner. Things to keep in mind with joint accounts is that both people have access to the money so they can both withdraw and make deposits as need be. If, let's say, you want to turn it into a single account, let's say you turn, I don't know, 25, 18, 21, uh, and you just want to be on your own, then you can call your bank and ask them, hey, how do I make this my own individual account? How do I have this only under my name? And it's done on a case-by-case basis. They might grant you permission. They might not. Different banks might have different requirements. Another thing is that you can also open another account and just transfer money into it. Uh, and again, if your parent is the co-owner of your account, it is probably best you discuss with them directly uh, what is going to be done with that account. Uh, picking your bank, an online bank versus a physical bank, the benefits and such. So online banks, typically speaking, many online accounts don't charge monthly service fees and some, some don't charge overdraft fees, which means they don't charge you if you go over zero. Now, the whole reason behind this is that they don't have to maintain a building. They don't have to hire security guards. They don't have to hire all these extra people that you're going to need if you have a traditional brick and mortar store, if you have a traditional physical bank. And because they have lower fees, they can also offer higher interest rates, 1.5% compared to typically 0.01% or 0.07. This may not seem like a big deal, but keep in mind that this is over a hundred times more than this amount right here. So here's a good example. If you have $10,000 and your interest rate is only 0.01, you'll only earn a dollar for the year. But if it's 1.5%, you'll earn $150 for the year. Uh, online banks tend to have better deals than physical banks, so their ATMs might be international completely. Uh, they might also just pay you back for any fees incurred by ATMs. Security is usually just as good uh, as physical banks. Uh, just some things to keep in mind is that since they're online, you make sure that your computer is protected with antivirus software. And avoid public networks. Uh, I would also say you the same for physical banks because a lot of physical banks are now offering online access. Uh, and again, online banks you can really access at just about any time. Uh, cons of online banks. There's no branches, so you need to call them and ask for their help or do chatting with them online with a customer service personnel. So you might not go in person and ask them questions. It might be difficult. A lot of banks also have financial advisors on hand, which is very useful, especially if you're starting out. You're not exactly sure what you need to do. And online banks, uh, it's very weird to deposit with online banks because it's not consistent across the board. For some, you could take a picture of your check because remember, you mainly need need a you mainly need a routing number and you mainly need a account number. And so, because of, you could just take a picture, you can send it to some banks; they'll accept. It. Others you need to send the physical check to. Others you need to use a third-party company in order to deposit it into your bank. So it's not consistent. It may be difficult for some. Uh, and also, your bank might not have every type of account available. It might have a savings, a money market, but it might not have a checking account. American Express, for example, does not offer a checking account, but they do offer savings accounts. Pros to traditional banks. A lot of these can be grouped basically as the convenience of seeing a person. So you could stop by and ask them a question. You get a personal experience. They can answer your questions there. Relationship building at the bank. So like I've known my bank or at least one of my banks for most of my life and they know me. 
in addition, those that are less tech savvy, you can have people help you there. It's if you're starting out too, they can help you through the world of finance. Financial advisors are going to help you, advise you on life. Well, not life, but on your money life. In addition, it's easier to deposit money. You go there, you deposit your check, you give them your ID, make sure you have an account there. Go there, put it in cash, make sure you have an account. Um, and they have a broad amount of services. So you can find usually checking, CD, savings accounts, money market, all at the same physical location, which is not always true with online banks. Uh, and uh, you get more interest if you have more than one account with them. But also keep in mind that the interest rate still isn't great. So, for example, uh, one of my banks, if you have both a checking and a savings account, beyond a certain amount, you get double the amount of interest. But double of 0 0.01 is 0 0.02, which is still not very good compared to online banks. So that leads us to the cons, which is they have lower interest rates and they generally have higher fees. Now they may waive, the fee, waive these fees if you keep a certain amount in the bank, but again, that's a bank-to-bank -bank basis, and not all are online yet. There are many local banks that are not. Uh, FDIC insurance, this is extremely important. What this means is that the government will reimburse you for up to $250,000 for, for, well basically, yeah. They'll reimburse you up to $250,000 based on all your accounts at a bank if a bank closes down. So let's say that uh, you have $100,000 in a checking account at a bank and you also have $100,000 in savings and $100,000 in money market. If the bank closes down, you don't get $350,000. Instead, you have you get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars because it insures you for two hundred and fifty thousand at one institution. Now let's say that you have a savings account at uh, American Express. You have a savings account at U.S. Bank. You have a savings account at Wells Fargo, uh, and they're all at a hundred thousand dollars. Since these are at three separate institutions, you get all your money back. So if you're going to ever have uh, over $250,000, it is best to not keep it in a single bank. You should put it across multiple banks if you can. And so I'm obviously not going to be able to cover everything here or answer all your questions. So I advise using this website, nerdwallet.com. In here, here, they have a bunch of information about finance here. We're mainly talking about banking. It has articles about savings accounts. And it has articles about opening a bank account, CDs 101, overdraft fees, checking accounts, etc., etc. And it allows you to compare banks and compare banks' accounts. So, right here, it tells you how much you'll make per savings account 1.7, 1.6, 1.5. It tells you if there's a minimum fee available. Notice, too, that. Uh, the number starts to go down, or at least the interest rate does. These are typically physical locations, like U.S. Bank has physical location, and so that might be a 0 0.01 interest rate compared to a non-physical location, oops, such as uh, American Express. And one thing I want you to be very aware of, too, is that uh, sorry about the jump cut there, uh, but one thing you should be aware of is that even if it says in this website that the interest rate is 1.75, you should still go to the actual website here. So I'm at the actual website now, and it says 1.75, but notice there's a little one here. So you click there, and it says money market account is accurate as of April 8, 2020. Interest rates for the money market are variable and may change at any time without prior notice so that means they can change up the interest rate on you without telling you so do keep that in mind when it comes to uh, looking at these interest rates they might not always be the most stable they can change with time this website also reviews banks telling you what they do like and they don't like 
so it's a very useful website for you to utilize I would recommend playing with it looking through it uh, yeah and another thing I want to mention uh, before I close up this video is that notice here that the uh, this here is the zip code so it's at 94103 but if you change it to uh, the local zip code 60622 uh, the zip code of Wells Academy notice it gives you a lot more options for the banks around you and again it tells you uh, what's around you and it gives you ratings for some of them it also tells you uh, if they're FDIC insured which again is most important so that way you do get reimbursed in case the bank closes down uh, if you have any more questions then please ask me otherwise you guys have a great day make good choices and uh, bye